Hi everybody, Jonathan Mark Mendes Painted Love and welcome back to another studio session. Thank you so much for your love and support in the first two studio, studio sessions. Um, I'm going to apologise ahead of time. I can see you already popping up. I am not going to um, answer any of your questions on the live. The reason being is I stumble over my words when I'm reading things out. And the other reason is that these are gonna exist in the YouTube channel, which is Jonathan Matt Mendes Painted Love, the same as here. And also they're gonna end up in the resource section of the Painted Love Academy. So there's different places where you can find these studio sessions. Anyway, without further ado, today we're working on, again, we're working small. Um, you can adapt this to your larger pieces of furniture. We're gonna be doing today color washing. Um, let's take a look at what we've got to play with. Okay, just a few, uh, few tools on the table today. Um, as you can see, I'm working on this beautiful uh, corbel. It's made of plaster. Um, it probably would be used maybe in a fireplace or something, but this could be a piece of wood, it wouldn't really matter. Um, I'm heading over, I'm coming. Um, so yeah, this is the corbel. I'll flip it to the side. Beautiful, um, beautiful design. This is made, it's white and it's made of plaster. Uh, something that I picked up in a, uh, on a car boot sale um, or a yard sale if you're elsewhere. Um, it's a beautiful thing, lots of detail. The reason I'm doing a detail again, it shows off color washing really well. Of course, it can be on a flat piece of furniture or just a furniture with rebate. I use color washing in my wet distress technique. Um, we do it the, the same color on color. If you're in the academy, you'll understand what I'm talking about there. Um, so all we're gonna use, again, once uh, as per usual, this has had two coats of a soft gray. Now, as I've said, mentioned before, I've gone with a soft gray because it's white and we're gonna be using quite liquid paint. It will remove to the white. So I'm using white as my third color in the process. If this was brown wood, you would probably um, coat with chalk paint, wax, coat again with another layer of chalk paint. If you want to uh, understand that a little bit more, my marble technique explains that layer, that sandwich of, of different chalk paints with wax and paint. Um, that's uh, free on the Academy group. Uh, sorry, the uh, Painted Love Academy. If you head there and register, you will see that sandwich. In the actual video, it's a long time since I did it. I used lacquer to seal down. Now we don't do that, we just use um, wax. It's far easier, much quicker. It means you can proceed with your next layer of paint without letting, without having to let the lacquer cure for 24 hours. I won't ramble on. I will talk a little bit more about the things that we're going to be using. So here I've got, I've got a rag, I've got another rag. This rag resembles a large drop cloth if you're working in your studio or in your kitchen or in your garden, it's to catch the liquid paint. That's what that's there for. Um, I've got my wax and a brush decanted out of a bowl. I like to do this rather than um, take it from the can, especially with dark colors. Don't want to contaminate the big can. We've got water here and some chalk paint. Um, as per usual, I do always mention ahead of time, would this work with other paints? Um, most definitely other chalk style paints, yes. Um, acrylic paint, I've not tried it. Uh, depends, depends on how much acrylic is in that paint um, and watered down and what it does. Mm, maybe not. Um, I'd like any of you um, acrylic paint users, if you fancy giving it a try and letting me know, that would be great. Um, I think it might work. It, it depends, it depends how clever you are with your paint skills. Anyway, um, I'm gonna flip again. So what I'm gonna do is, again, I, I don't always do this. I sometimes go chalk paint on chalk paint and similar to the frottage technique, you can do. Um, I'm gonna seal some of this off with some wax, some clear wax. And I'm not worried about getting it into all the crevices because that's not where I want it. I kind of want to seal the top surface any of the raised detail with a bit of wax. Um, 
Again, if you allow this to cure for a longer period of time, you might end up with better results. Like I said, the colours that I've chosen are really sometimes crucial to um, the results that you get. And I know that this is white, and I know that some of the white will come back. And I'm quite happy for that to do that. I'm happy for it to come back to this. That's why I've chose a pale colour. Um, it's like anything, with furniture painting, you look at what your raw materials are. Um, sometimes I look at some of my big old um, Victorian furniture and I look at the varnish and think that's a bit blown and if I'm using chalk paint I might not actually use a pale colour on it because sometimes that might kick out some issues. I might have to, you know, I'll patch test it somewhere on the back and then I'll know that it's going to bleed through and uh, rather than spending all of that time using Zinza to, to block out any of the... the um, to block out any of the stains, I'll just go with an appropriate colour to suit the piece of furniture. Um, I suppose that's the artist in me. I'll look at something and think, all right, I'm not doing this because I want it white. I'm doing it because I think it will look great with the colour on it. So, um, yeah, lots of reasons why you might do something. When you learn chalk paint, um, or any of the other brands of paint, you will learn instinctively how, when you use it quite frequently, you'll learn instinctively what it likes and what it doesn't like. And um, it, it's the most asked question for me uh, when I'm t talking about chalk paint and what do you do if this happens? Or how do you do dark wax? Um, which I think we'll show. Um, there's lots of different ways and I allow the piece to, to talk to me. Um, it's probably instinctively now, but given doing all of these um, studio sessions, this is why I've developed them as small techniques, just small techniques, because you'll build up an awareness in each technique. It's a much like the academy. There's lots of different techniques. If you do the six weeks masterclass in my academy, you come out the other end and you subconsciously, you've learned so many different things subconsciously what you might do is take wet distress and vintage faded florals and am amalgamate the two together and that's why I like to do it that way teach lots of different things because the paint does so many different things and amalgamate because when you learn little things you can piece them together it's like a big jigsaw puzzle and it becomes something it becomes your own um, a lot of these techniques you know some of them are not mine um, I use them there are other people's techniques. Some of them are instinctively mine um, that I've created. I've looked back um, to old techniques and reconfigured them to work with chalk paint. If I'm using chalk paint, that's what I've I've done with those. Right, so that's a bit of wax on. I'm gonna kind of buff it off. It's still quite, I can feel it's still quite sticky. Um, and that's fine. I just wanted it to kind of seal some of the top surface in. I'm gonna reuse this cloth as well afterwards. All right. All right, we'll let that sit in for a minute. The idea of this cobalt, I mean, this could literally have sat maybe on a piece, you know, a big Victorian, um, a sideboard or a dresser. I've got a dresser that's got cobbles like this at the top and the bottom. Um, this this technique would be really good for that and you can use it also in other areas on the piece of furniture. Also incorporating wet distress. In my academy tutorial we have a wet distress tutorial which also helps you how to create those perfect little chips that make a piece of furniture look aged. Anyway. Let's go back to this and we'll start mixing paint and water and here we go. So just pull this aside a little bit. So in here I've mixed two colours, a, a dark, I've mixed a dark brown really. Um, the light's not too good in here at the minute but it's kind of a dark brown. I've mixed a black and a brown together, a muddy colour basically. Um, I do need a brush. I've lost a brush. One moment, let me grab a brush. This one will do. Right, so. So, chalk paint, notoriously quite thick. 
So that's why I'm watering it down, colour washing it. Colour washes, for me, you don't want to be going beyond 60% water. You go beyond that, it just washes away, it doesn't do anything. It just kills the, the other layers of paint on whatever you're painting. It absolutely kills the layers of them. So, um, literally, 30%, 40%, 50%, all pretty good for this. Um, so, mix it up. It's, I always do it by feel. I never like to measure things. People always ask me measurements, and I never measure anything. And it's just by... And I think... If you do that, it instinctively becomes sort of your habit then, and you feel your way through things. That's what, how I, do, I like to do things. I feel my way through things. Um, and I'll probably say it's more like, you've seen me do this already, it's more like um, a cream consistency. You know, it's kind of a bit trickly, and it runs off the brush. But incorporate quite well together, so the pigment, because chalk paint, um, as we've talked about before, it can separate. All right, I can feel that that's really, really nice and incorporated. Again, we're gonna work quick with this to get the best results. Well, let's clear the decks. We're gonna pop this here. We'll start maybe like this. Um, and the idea is, colour washing, especially with detail like this, it's a little bit like dark waxing. We want to get the paint. We're aiming for the paint to be in the crevices, in the actual, you know, in the actual detail, and we're gonna remove it from other places. So, quickly does it, straight on with the paint, and I'm, I'm doing kind of a stabbing technique with this just to get that paint in. It looks a hot mess. But well, that's fine. That's what it's supposed to look like. Um, if you paint slightly thicker, it will dry quicker and it will be not as easy. So it does need to be, can you see how that's trickling away into the details? That's fine. Straight over all of the details. I'll flip it again here. Some of uh, the techniques that I like to use most are the, the messiest ones. I've always said that. The, the messy ones are always the fun ones. They give the best results anyway, in my opinion. And the paint does it for you. It's not just you creating it. The paint has a unique way of showing you how it wants to be. Right. So that's what we've got. Most of the details, you can see, it's still trickling off. And we're gonna pop it back down here. And what I'm gonna do is, I have got a water spray to one side, I'm gonna grab that. Uh, there we go. So I'm gonna, I've got a damp cloth. I'm gonna damp, dampen the cloth a little bit. I'm spraying off camera. Um, and then all we're gonna do is just, can you see, I'm just removing the paint from the surface. It's a slow process. This cloth is quite absorbent as well. I'm not pushing into the details. I'm just literally, we'll do it here, picking off the surface and it's bringing it back to the gray and a little bit of that white, which I expected that to happen um, and I'm quite happy for that to happen because I like that sort of look. That's lovely. Maybe a little bit more and then I'm gonna stop because the look at the end when it's dry is far different to what you're seeing right now. Yeah, that's lovely. So now we've got that beautiful stone-like quality. It's got the gray, it's got the browns, it's got the, a little bit of the white coming back. And if you really want to bring the white back more, you can rub and use this as an abrasive. You can rub it slightly, but what I would suggest, I'm bringing it up to you, what I would suggest is not to rub too hard, just pat away until you get that beautiful, and can you see it all sits in those gorgeous crevices. 
and you see a little bit of the white coming through. So if this was wooden, you would have the brown of the wood coming through. So it obviously choose your color choices wisely. Use the technique, but choose wisely for what you're working on. Uh, I absolutely love this. I think it's really beautiful. And this will make a gorgeous staging prop for me um, in the workshop or in the house even. It just sat, on, I mean, what was a plaster, an ugly plaster um, corbel. Now I'm gonna actually, because I've got, I haven't really finished the end, but I'm gonna use it as an ornament in the house. Just take that off. pop it there and give you a more detailed shot. So here we go. Let's move this out the way. All of these out the way. The end result of this is just absolutely stunning. I think so anyway. If I come close to this camera, the light's much better here. You can see little bits of, that's me pulling it off with my fingers, but little bits of the white, pe the white plaster coming through as well as some of the detail, that's a shame. Let's have a little go at fixing that. I think it's from picking it up. There we go. Happy mistakes. Everything's fixable. So there we go, like that. Now I think this would be fabulous as a bookend. I've got two of them, so I could make them bookends. Or they will look wonderful just on the mantelpiece, just on the mantelpiece with a plant next to it. Now it kind of got that more stone effect to it. Um, I do have a tutorial that is a marble um, versus a, mar a marble technique with a stone base. Um, very similar to this, but a lot more developed. So if any of you want to do that. Also, what I would say is any of you guys that have been uh, part of the Academy, um, the Painted Love Academy, and you have purchased two or more of the tutorials, you are welcome to enter the Academy group. There's only a, a few hundred of you in there, in the Academy group. That's because not everybody has entered the group and it's such a warm, friendly group and everybody shares their ideas over these techniques and many other techniques that are not even mine. So um, if you've bought two or more, please um, request to come into the Painted Love Academy. Um, it's a lovely, warm, inviting place where you can learn all sorts and share ideas with all of the other Academy groupies. Um, but anyway, thank you everybody for tuning in to today's uh, studio session. Um, absolutely, thoroughly enjoyed it. And it's great to see all of you all over the world popping up on the live um, and much love to you all. So thank you so much for joining me. Take